Welcome to our Volkswagen TV training and thank you for tuning in. Since 2003, Volkswagen have, has been using amperes to steer. That's when the electromechanical power steering was introduced on the Mark V Golf. Now we're in the 2009 model year, there is a Mark VI Golf and the electromechanical power steering is in its third generation. Not only in the Mark VI Golf, but also shortly in the Golf Plus. Our trainer has already disassembled it several times, all the way down to the latest detail, Mr. Carsten Oehlmann. Hello and welcome from me as well. Today we will look at the electromechanical power steering of the third generation with dual opinion. As you said, yes, we've disassembled it. Uh, we are going to see that in today's training, but first of all, a quick overview for you, how to see if it's a third generation steering or not. For that, let's take a look at the attachment points of the steering. Wenn die Lenkung drei Befestigungspunkte hat, dann ist es auch drei Befestigungspunkte. Here we can say that if it has three attachment points, then it's a third generation steering. Here at the driver's side, where the um, steering column is connected, one uh, up here and one down there. If we take a look at the other side, we used to have one clamp, and now we only have this uh, single attachment point down there. <laughs> The other one has been dropped. Nothing has really changed. Of course, we have track rods and track rod ends and uh, boot, as every other power steering has. And we have the steering torque sender, which is integrated in this casing. If we take a further look, here we can see the electric motor with the black electric control, electronic control unit, the motor, and the uh, steering gearbox with the second pinion. There is one component that people talk about a lot, the G85 steering angle sender. Can you point that out for us, please? Well, the G85 no longer exists. It has been dropped. However, the steering angle needs to be determined. Uh, the power steering, of course, needs the steering angle to calculate uh, the power resistance. ESP needs it too. But uh, we're going to take a further look at that later on. First of all, let's recap the the service jobs that the the retailers may do on the on the power steering as for the first and second generation of course you can replace the track rods the track rod ends the boot if it's defective and uh, the grommet of the bulkhead m can also be replaced if it's defective. You may not replace uh, the steering torque sender, the casing itself, the um, steering rack or the electric motor with the electronic control unit. You cannot uh, replace uh, or disassemble these components without destroying them. Then you really have to um, replace the whole steering. In other words, please don't do at home or in the workshop what we have done for this program, namely disassemble the electromechanical power steering all the way to the latest detail. The reason why we could do that is because there is a difference between our power steering here and the one you may be looking at in your workshop. The one we have here will never again be installed in a vehicle. No, it won't, and it's not possible, because as I said, the components cannot be uh, disassembled without destroying them. <coughs> at first, let's take a close look at the components. This is the steering torque sender as a single component. It has a connection to the um, steering column, then the sensor itself, and the steering um, pinion, which engages in um, the steering rack. Let's take a look at where that happens. This can be easily taken out. There are some teeth, uh, teeth here at the steering rack where the steering pinion engages. If we go further along, there are some more teeth. 
von der Zahnstange an weitere Verzahnung. Dort geht das Ritzel für die. This Motor is where the drive pinion of the electric an. motor engages. Unser Elektromotor. Let's take a closer look at the electric motor. This is the second pinion. In this grey casing you also find the worm gear. In the silver casing uh, we have the electric motor and the electronic control unit is integrated in that motor. We had to uh, saw it through to show you um, all the electric wires uh, are broken and you cannot repair this anymore. This is the electric motor, the, the coil, for example, and the rotor itself. On this side of the rotor, we have uh, some teeth which engage in the worm gear. If I show you, you can see that uh, this uh, drives um, the worm gear and makes the power system uh, systems possible. The steering torque and the steering angle indirectly are determined by the same component, the sender for steering torque. Sometimes people say that it consists only of one single shaft, but that couldn't be, because if that was the case, then no steering torque could be determined. Clamp one of the shafts of the steering angle sender tightly with a vise. As both shafts are connected via a torsion bar, you can turn the upper shaft without the lower shaft turning with it. Okay, let's take a look at the interior parts of the sensor. What exactly is there inside? This happens with help of the backlash between these two shafts. This is the steering torque sender, which uh, determines um, the steering torque. If we take a look at this little black thing, this is a magnet as an additional feature and a whole sender is integrated into this casing which uh, determines the signal every 360 degrees. It passes the sender and emits the signal. If I turn it 360 degrees, that is one steering wheel turn, we have a 10 degree signal. So this is about the steering angle. 360 degrees, that's not enough, it's not precise enough, is it? Yes, we need a second signal, which is the rotor position sender integrated into the electric motor. If we take a look at the so, uh, other side of the motor, we have a magnet and uh, we have the north and the south pole as you can see and uh, the line in the middle is the separation of these two poles. This magnet um, emits a signal to the or sends a signal to the electronic control unit. There is a little recess you can see and this is where the magnet is located. If it turns, if the electric motor turns, then the magnet turns as well and the senders on the other side can detect the rotor position and then the elect uh, electronic control unit can detect how fast the rotor spins. And these two signals are used to calculate the angle much more precise than used to be the case previously, 14 times more precise. The electromechanical power steering, for instance, of the Mark V Golf, provides measured values in increments of 1.4 degrees. The steering angle sender of the electromechanical power steering of the third generation provides significantly more accurate measured values with increments of 0.1 degrees. Also, jetzt 0,1 Grad Schritte statt 1,4 Grad Schritte, also eine 14-fach höhere Genauigkeit im virtuellen. So it's 14 times more precise than previously. Carsten, how does the control unit calculate the steering angle with this kind of precision. 
We have a steering ratio of 48 to 1. That means uh, 48 uh, motor revolutions corresponds to one steering wheel turn. Here we have 48 uh, periods or 96 uh, peaks at the DSO, if we take a look at that. So one revolution, if we take a look at the index signal, which uh, emits a peak every 360 degrees, so one signal per revolution. Okay, so we have these 48 periods, 48 turns of the motor, and in the same time the steering wheel makes one rotation 360 degrees. 360 divided by 48 gives us 7.5. How do we get to, z to 0 0.1 degrees? The rest is calculated by the electronic control unit. Let's take a look at that. Uh, 7.5 degrees at the steering wheel is not precise enough. You can see that in yellow. The rotor position sender has uh, 96 peaks per revolution and that's a precision of 3.75. You can see that in blue here from the perspective of the motor. It means that uh, one revolution of the motor is 3.75 on the steering wheel, and if it were only one degree at the motor, then it corresponds to 0 0.01 degrees on the steering wheel. This is not a measured value, but it's um, calculated by the ECU because the ECU knows how long, how often, and in which direction the motor has been actuated. Keyword ESP. The ESP has always been using 1.4 degree increments. Now the steering uses 0 0.1 degree increments. What, what changes? The electronic control unit has to calculate more. The steering still detects uh, differences in angle of up to a hundredth of degree. But but for the steering itself, we only need um, a tenth of a degree, and the control unit of the ESP uses 1.4 degrees. So these increments of uh, 1.4 degrees are stored on the CAN data bus and can then be further processed. The virtual G85 thus has a higher precision on the third generation of the electromechanical power steering. This greater precision also affects the people who work in the service, Carsten. So the service technicians have to be very meticulous when they adapt the G85. Yes, even though it's only a calculated value, it has to be adapted. That happens in the guided fault finding. Please make sure that you thoroughly read uh, the instructions and adhere to them. If it tells you to let go of the steering wheel, please do not touch the steering wheel. Even the slightest movements, for example, if you have uh, the hand on the steering, steering wheel or if it's a knee or if it's a bit shaky, for it, this can lead to wrong results. You might have to start all over again because it's uh, a faulty measurement or it's not precise enough. Of course, you don't want to have to do the work twice. That's why please follow all of the steps as thoroughly as possible. Enter the adjustment sequence for the sender via the guided fault finding. Please note that this sequence only applies to the steering angle sender fitted to the electromechanical power steering of the third generation. DTC 00778 tells you that the sender has not been adjusted yet. The tester now deletes the adaptation values of the steering. The adjustment itself is performed during a test drive. The tester now asks you to perform two steering maneuvers. At first, turn the steering wheel 90 degrees to the right and then 90 degrees to the left. Afterwards, the vehicle needs to be driven straight ahead. 
It was unmistakably a Mark VI Golf that we used for this short film. On other cars, the adaptation process or procedure may be slightly different. But one thing that always applies is once you have made the adjustment, please verify that it's correct. Yes, with the electromechanical power steering, you have to check if uh, the angle is correct in an adaption, adaptation drive. So what influence does the, sen does the sensor have on the directional stability of the car? The sensor provides the only um, signal for the position of the steering and the electromechanical power steering has an active return to the center mechanism so the steering tries to correct into the straight ahead position or to and if it smell adapted then uh, the steering thinks it goes um, it goes straight ahead but pulls to the side the end result would be the same as a maladjusted wheel alignment you keep have to counter steer to keep the vehicle going straight ahead the steering angle sender is incorrectly adjusted. It determines approximately minus 14 degrees while you're driving straight ahead, so the vehicle pulls heavily to the right. The reason is that the sender is not set to zero degrees, but to minus 14 degrees. This is why the steering gearbox tries to counter steer to the left. As a result, the vehicle pulls to the left. We are talking about the third generation of the electromechanical power steering in today's training. What about the conditions, Carsten, for the adaptation drive? The vehicle should drive on a plain surface. The road should be plain and even. The steering should be straight. There shouldn't be any side winds to make the vehicle drift to the right or the left. And if you um, stop while you're driving straight ahead, then stop and do not touch the steering anymore. So much for our overview of the electromechanical power steering third generation.